today we're going to think about tens and ones uh, and how we can break numbers up into tens and ones so it helps us when we're doing our calculating, which we're going to do a little bit later. So for example, if we look at the number 32, sometimes we might be able to see how many tens and ones there are, other times we might need to draw it. So we're going to do a little bit of both. So I look at the number 32, I like to sometimes, help me, I like to write a T and an O to remember which ones are the tens and which ones are the ones. And now I can draw that and I can draw that in whatever way I want to, as long as I can tell which ones are the tens and which ones are the ones. So here I can see that there are three tens, so I'm going to draw three long sticks to show three tens. And then I can also draw my ones, which I'm going to do with nice little circles here. So I know there are two ones. So I know number 32 is made up of three tens and two ones. And as long as I can say that, then that will help me when it comes to later. But because we get a bit more interesting now, we can start to think about how our number is broken up in different ways. So it doesn't have to be just the tens and just the ones. We can move it in different ways. So if I think about the number 32 again, I'm going to draw it this time inside a bubble model to help me a little bit. I know that 32, because we just learned it a minute ago, is made up of three tens and two ones. But I can now use that to help me split it up in a different way. As long as I only use three tens and two ones all together. So I might decide, well actually I'm going to put two tens here. So I've used up two of my tens, so I'm going to cross them out so I don't forget. And then what I've got left, I'm going to put in this side. So I've got one ten, and I've got two ones. So actually, 32 isn't just made up of three tens and two ones, or 30 and two. It's also made up of 20 and 12. And I can write that underneath. So I can see another way. So if you want to pause it and watch it again, if not, we're going to do one more in a minute so you can kind of remember how it works. So let's choose a different number. This time I'm going to choose uh, 48 this time. So first I'm going to think about splitting it just into tens and ones. I'm going to use my bobble model this time to help me. So let me write a T there and an O there so I don't forget. So I know that in 48 there are four tens. I'm going to draw my four tens. One, two, three, four. And there are eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's my number. And now I'm going to move on. This is in the next lesson that you might look at tomorrow. I'm then going to think about, well, how can I split this up now in a more interesting way? So I know there are four tens and eight ones. I'll keep that there so I don't forget about it. So if I draw 48 again, And this time I'm going to use, well, let's use one ten on this side. And then I'm going to put everything else on that side. So I've got to put one, two, three more tens and eight more ones. So again, I know that 48 is not just made up of four tens and eight ones, or 40 and eight, it's also made up of one ten. And I've got 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. That's another way of making 48. And you don't just have to stop there. You can make 48 in a different way, and another way, and another way, and another way, and another way, to see how many different ways you can make the same number. And that helps us when we're adding and when we're taking away, because we can speed up trying to add up just our 10s and just our 1s, rather than trying to do it all in our head straight away. If you have any more problems, make sure you send an email to Parent Queries, but hopefully that will help you become great at partitioning your numbers.